and welcome back to my channel Melanade Beauty. Today's video is officially part two of an amazing DIY room transformation. We finally get to include all of those DIYs we created in part one and of course my favorite styling and decorating for the reveal. Now for those of you who are just now getting to all the fun, I have taken on the challenge to transform an old teen's bedroom into a sophisticated guest bedroom, mid-century modern vintage style. But if you are here for the DIYs, don't worry because I have included a DIY hack for your bedroom, especially if it's a small space. Now, without further ado, let's get started. And here's a quick recap of the space. We were working with a very messy, very unorganized, and absolutely no style. However, we were able to flip a dresser, DIY a mid-century stand, and upholster a DIY headboard. We also painted the room a fresh coat of white, and just when we thought that the space was prepped and ready to go, we realized that there was no floor space for a desk, which was very crucial to adding in this guest room. Um, so we did find a different solution using the closet. But before I go any further, I just wanna say stop right now. If you haven't seen part one, stop this video, go click that video and watch it. That's where I have all the DIY elements that you're gonna wanna see before okay, this so one. Okay, so last minute, we are thinking of doing a closet desk hack. We need a desk and the closet might be what we go with. So a desktop shelf would be from like this wall to there. And then we have like this space for like hanging storage of office supplies, etc. And then we have this top shelf for books and more storage. And we could have like a bulletin board like hanging right here. And here are the inspiration photos that I found on Pinterest that I'll be going by. So I like to consider this as our mini demo day. Daniel took off that paneling that was holding up the closet rod and we're just gonna patch it up and smooth it out with some fresh paint so we can have a nice clean backing for when we add our shelves. Now that all the holes have been filled and the walls are sanded to a smooth finish, I am ready to paint. I'm gonna be using that same paint that we used for the walls for the bedroom. So I'm giving this entire closet two coats of paint, including the lavender colored door frame. And while that dries, we're gonna head out to Lowe's to pick up some supplies. So here I rather choose a pre-coated painted and ready to go shelf. This is gonna save me time, although it was about $2 more than buying the wood shelves and just painting them myself, but this is definitely gonna save me some time. Overall, we'd like the space to remain modern and simple for our guests. So we're gonna have a white back wall with white shelves and some white brackets. So I, we picked up three of these and then we went to Walmart to get the shelf brackets because they're a lot cheaper there. Um, I'm not really concerned of doing floating shelves because it's a more functional, practical space than for looks. Um, when we got home, we realized that the shelf was a little bit too long for the wall. So um, I went on and I trimmed them down with a jigsaw just so they'll be able to fit nice and snug in the closet. All right, so we have our first shelf up and I think it looks pretty good, although there's a little bit of a contrast with the two-tone whites. Daniel is now doing a seat test where he's gonna see exactly how far we need to hang the desk shelf. 
um, for someone who's a standard height to, you know, sit there and work. Obviously, this DIY desk hack is for those who don't mind being, you know, closed in to really focus on whatever they're working on as to others who would prefer a more open concept like in front of a window or in a coffee shop. However, I think this is a great alternative for small spaces. And as always, you are keeping it very budget friendly. So I am back at Walmart to pick up some supplies such as this hanging desk organizer. This is gonna come in such good handy so we can have open shelves and really use up the wall space. I also grabbed these touch activated puck lights in the light section at Walmart. They were $10 for the pack. They come with this sticky backing so you can apply them wherever you need some sourceful lighting. So we added the puck lights at the bottom of the second shelf. That way it will illuminate the desk shelf. Now I'm just gonna add a few final touches to the space and we're all done. So temporarily, I've styled it with some books and some office supplies so you can really see the function of this tiny desk space. It's super comfortable actually inside of there. It's very minimal. You can really think and focus. And we also found this chair that fits nice and snug inside. So you can pull it out whenever you're in use of the office space. And when you're finished, you just scooch it back in right under the desk and you can completely close the door and hide this space whenever you need to. And now that our desk closet is complete, I am now able to move on with the rest of the guest bedroom. So I'm adding this picture wire to the back of our headboard so that way I can hang it just as I would as a picture. This is actually the easiest way to hang this lightweight headboard. And oh my goodness, it looks so good. I didn't think it would look this good. And as you see here, I am using some painter's tape to help me guide where exactly I need to nail in my hooks for this picture. I actually found this hack on the Lone Fox channel. I love him. And we're also going to be using some tape to help center the picture right in the middle of the headboard. This tape hack really helps a lot when you're trying to center artwork. So I would definitely consider trying it. This artwork is by Studio McGee and we actually hung it horizontally. That way it makes the perfect artwork above the bed. And now it is time to find a rug. So I'm going to be using this rug in the space. I got it from Goodwill for $15 a while back. And I think the design is perfect for that vintage element that I would like to add. And these curtain rods are from Goodwill as well. They were $2 a piece and they're like a solid raw iron material. So I'm going to be hanging these a little bit above the window frame, of course to give the illusion of higher tall ceilings. Now the curtains I'll be using are actually about an 84 inch in length. I would actually need a little bit more inch to make them floor to ceiling curtains. So I'm going to compromise and hang them not as close to the ceiling, but not as close to the window frame. Um, this way they can still kind of hang low to the floor 
but they aren't able to really kiss the floor like I would like. But I still think that they give the illusion of higher ceilings. Also, I'm only using one panel per window because I couldn't find a set of four that were matching at the warehouse sale. Um, and the windows are very narrow and small, so I figured they would be just enough to just only have one panel. I recently picked up this beautiful oil painted framed artwork from a estate sale. My friend reached out to me and said that they were kind of giving away stuff for free before actually selling the estate. So I snagged a couple of these gorgeous gilded frames and I think it's just the perfect addition to this wall here. Now it's time to style the bed. Keep in mind that I'll be linking all of the products that I'm using in this room makeover down in the description box below. Now very quickly, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Sleepgram. I'm using Sleepgram pillows for this makeover for several reasons. Number one being that this is a guest bedroom and I want the material of these pillows to be as hyperallergenic and sensitive free as possible. And to add a little bit of luxury, they also sent me these 100% silk pillowcases. Now Sleepgram pillows are made up of a microfiber polyester fill, which is a great alternative for that feathered down fill that you usually see in luxury bedding. However, although this is not down and feather filled, the quality of this pillow really feels like a true down alternative. Now what intrigued me the most about these pillows is that you don't have to choose a firmness level on the spot online when you're ordering. They actually come completely customizable with three different loft settings that you can choose from. The outer lining of this pillowcase being one of them, as well as two other pillow inserts that you can swap out based on your firmness level preference. One is soft loft and the other is a firm and they are also color coded so you know which is which. Or you could just keep both inserts in for a equal balance between soft and firm. Now these 100% silk pillowcases are absolutely luxury. They are so soft and you know, I'm used to using satin and trust me, there is a big difference. Now for what you get, these pillows are very affordable. You can get a set of two for $44 each and they also offer free shipping, which is a lot cheaper than what I have paid for in the past for my other pillows. And to save even more money, you can use my code MELANATE20 for 20% off your purchase. So if you're interested, I'll be sure to link all of the information down below in the description box. And now for the fun part, decorative pillows. <laughs> Although we're not gonna be using many because this is a twin size bed and we don't wanna overcrowd it. We don't wanna do too much. We just wanna keep it, you know, just enough texture, but without the clutter. So first I'm gonna add a plush velvet pillow in a deep navy color paired with a sage green textured pillow for a balanced layered effect. So we have it nice and simple with your sleeping pillow and then two decorative pillows staggered on top. I'm also gonna add in this blue throw blanket with a white textured stitch and tassels for even more texture. Since we're very limited on the bed space, I really wanna throw in a lot of pattern and different colors to bring out the bed. And I'm just gonna polish up this beautiful walnut colored furniture piece that I thrifted from Goodwill that you saw in the part one video that I upcycled into a very mid-century piece, as well as these other thrifted elements that I'll be using to decorate the space, such as these mini vessels and a boho decorative box, as well as some brass bookends and of course, books. And here is how I style this mid-century stand. Now I'm just adding a few more final touches to the space, including this beautiful cane backing accent chair from Target and a decorative throw basket with a plush throw blanket beside it. 
Now let's just take a quick look at the space before. so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give a big thumbs up as well as commenting down below remember that all product links are listed in the description box use my code melanie 20 for 20 percent off your purchase with sleepgram and as always please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video now until next time bye